What a wonderful winter day the good Lord has given us. Hope you take time and enjoy it. Been a busy week and will continue to be. Uh, the, uh, we'll be going to the Tri-State Food Bank on Monday. We'll be starting to fill uh, the uh, baskets around uh, 10 o'clock on Monday. And then the food distribution itself will be Tuesday from 8 to 10. We need all kinds of items. If you'd like to donate anything, it's beginning to be a very challenging time to try to get items for the food pantry. Next Sunday evening, we will be having a business meeting in the Family Life Center at five o'clock and ask for your prayers upon that. Bill will continue to clean the church, but he is not going to be cleaning the Family Life Center anymore. So anyone that is interested, please contact the church office. Uh, Ricky Cat is going to be having a heart cath this week, and Jeff Pryor is really struggling at this time. We ask for your prayers there. We have three acknowledgments today. We are so touched by your prayers, your cards, your acts of kindness at this most difficult time. To Brother Terry and the church family, you were all there when we needed you and the help meant so much to all of us at all that you did. This is from Steve and Charlotte Walling. This was on the, the death of their daughter, Danny. We also have an acknowledgement from Bernie Sini's family. Words cannot express how much we appreciate all that you have done for Bernie. Bernie loved the church and loved to be with the people. She felt so bad that she could not attend during this time of COVID. Thank you all for all that you've done. Then we have one from Wanda and Wayman. Dear church family, thank you so much for all your thoughts, your cards, your prayers during our sadness. We love you all. You know, God does so many things in his word. He gives us so many instructions that are there to help us each and every day that we live. This morning, I'm going to be sharing with you, the battle belongs to the Lord. In 2 Chronicles 20, 15, do not be afraid or dismayed at the great, of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it's God's. And God, there's so many things that we go through in life that we can call battles that we struggle with. The how do we do them? What should we do? What should we not do? But you tell us that each battle that we have, you're concerned about. And each battle that we have, you know how to handle. So God, I ask you to speak with us today as we look at your word, as you bring it out to us, how important it is that no matter what it is, no matter how difficult it is that we are facing, you are in charge and you are in control. I ask you to be with our nation, the transition of leadership of president, vice president of the news of the uh, Senate and the House of Representatives, Lord, help them to try to work together, but by all means, God, help them to call upon you and seek you out and seek your guidance and wisdom and listen and act accordingly. Because with you, God, all things are possible and you can make harmony where there is complete disharmony. I ask you to be with those that are serving our nation. I ask you to help them keep them safe and be with their families back home. Be with us as a church that God, we always look at new and exciting ways that we can reach out. And with this COVID, the, the things that are going on, so many people are struggling, God. And I know we have to take it step by step, but as we call upon you, we put it in your hands and we're gonna thank you, God for what you're gonna to do to take care of it. In your precious name we pray, amen. The battle belongs to the Lord. In 2 Chronicles 20, 15, be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it's God's. A great multitude was coming against Jehoshaphat and all of Judea. When the king heard about the report of this attack, he was afraid. That is kind of the normal response when we hear a bad report of news. 
It doesn't have to be the final response. No matter how bad the report is, if we remember that God is on our side and God can quickly turn from fear to faith. And soon as Jehoshaphat heard the news, he felt afraid. He was determined immediately to seek the Lord, not only seek him, but earnestly seek him, pour his total heart out into it, pour his total being into it. Jehoshaphat feared and proclaimed the fast throughout all of Judea. Judea gathered the people together and asked help from the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood at the assembly of Judea and, and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the, before the new courts and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nation? And in your hands is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friends forever? And they dwelt in it and have built you a sanctuary in it. For your name saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple in your presence. For your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and you will save. He goes on to talk of the enemy. Here, here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. No, do we know what to do? But our eyes are upon you. And he said, listen, all of you of Judah, and your inhabitants of Jerusalem, and your King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to do, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. God tells us that we do not have to be dismayed because the battle is his, it is not ours. We can clearly see in the story the principle that we should do what we can do and let God do what we cannot do. Jehoshaphat could not win the battle, be, battle because it was not his to win. He was to give it to God. Many groups had joined together to defeat him in Judah. Seeking God was something he could do. He wasted no time. He sought God diligently. He sought God seriously. Jehoshaphat knew he was doomed to defeat unless God showed him what to do. The people came together. They sought help from God. Did you catch that one part? The people came together. God wants us as brothers and sisters in Christ who always come together and seek him out and pray. Jehoshaphat also gave God praise for his power, for his majesty, and confessed that no one was able to stand against him. We should follow that example in seeking God and giving him praise for all of his marvelous acts that he has done. This is a warning to us as well as an example set before us. Disasters, conflicts, turmoil, they come. We complain, but first of all, we need to go to God. We need to call upon God. Jehoshaphat reminded God that he had pre previously driven out these same enemies and given his people, Israel, the land. He reminded God that he gave this land forever to the descendants of Abraham. 
He said they had lived in the land and built God a sanctuary in his name. He reminded God of the time they had stood before the sanctuary they had built in honor of him, confessing, if evil comes upon us, or the sword of judgment, our plague, our famine, we will stand before the house and before you. And we will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear, and you will save us. I hope you see the wisdom in these words this morning. Jehoshaphat used in this approaching God, we had not made a petition for help with this problem, but he had sought God. He had fasted, given praise, and reminded God that he had given them the land. Only after doing all of this did he mention the problem. He reminded God that he would not allow Israel to invade those nations when they came from Egypt. And now their enemies were rewarding them by coming to drive them out of the land God had given them for an inheritance. Jehoshaphat, he spoke with God. He spoke sincerely with God. He presented his problem to God from his heart. He respectively told God that the promise that he had was to give it all to him and that the problem was his. He gave them the land and he wouldn't let them destroy these same enemies when they could have done so. The land and the people belonged to him anyway. What Jehoshaphat did was very powerful and it was something we all need to do in times of battle. He admitted totally, he admitted completely his dependence upon God. In 2 Chronicles 20, 12, it says, O oh God, will you not judge them? For we are all powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Jesus says that apart from him, we can do nothing. And the sooner we learn the truth, the more battles we will win. He is the vine, we are the branches, and no branch can survive very long and be separated from the vine, which itself is our life source. How we need to truly come to grips of our dependence upon God. Every day, honestly, every moment of every day, God, I need you. God, I'm nothing without you. God, I can't do anything if you're not there with me. See, we belong to God. We need him always in our lives. God leads us and we are to follow. Nothing works if it's not in that order because God must direct us. We must not try to do it on our own. After the people declare that their eyes are on God, they wait. Or are they to wait? Was there anything God wanted them to do? Or should they honestly just keep standing there? He said they were to go down against the enemy tomorrow. And he told them exactly where they would find them. He then said, you need not fight in this battle. Make your position. Stand and witness the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all of Judah fell before the Lord. Some bowed, some worshiped, while others stood and praised with a loud voice. They did have something to do, but it was perhaps a little different than what they would have done normally in the battle. But they were 
following, honoring, and respecting God. If God gives us something to do, then we need to do it. If he leads us to worship, be obedient to it. The key is winning our battles or letting God fight our battles. It's, not, it's just not to be doing nothing. It is so important for us to let God lead us in the direction we need to go. You know, in all that is going through us and all that we are facing, I just ask you to be patient, let God work, let God lead, and let God help us day by day, step by step, hour by hour. God, as we come to you, I ask you to help us in all the different things that we're facing. We praise you, God, that our battles are not ours, they're yours. And you can handle them so much better than we can. So God, I thank you for this time that we've had today. There could be one Lord that has never ever accepted you as their Lord. That's so important, Lord, please speak today. There could be needs that each one have and they just need to turn them over and to realize we need to put those battles in the Lord's hands and let him take it because he can ease it and calm it better than anyone ever. So God, today, we thank you that we can call upon you. We praise you for your time that we've had together. And we just ask you, Lord, to bless each one in this next week that they have a good week in you. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless and have a wonderful week in the Lord. Pauline and I send our love to you.